Guys, it's Ed Yannette, Keller Williams. I'm at 210 West 38th Street, and I'm here. Um, a buddy of mine, Chris Peterson, owns a garage door company. It's called ProLift, and uh, his guys are putting in uh, a couple of garage doors. And I was going to ask them a couple questions because garage doors are a weird thing. You know, you never think about them until there's a problem. And then when there's a problem, you probably should get a professional to check them out because um, I used to be in construction and I um, would never mess with garage doors. They were just the springs and they're they're very dangerous and uh, are pretty easy to adjust and work on if you know what you're doing. But like I said, I, I would never mess with them. So anyway, let's go, in, go inside and see what they're doing. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah. Hey, boys. How are you, sir? Good, bud. I'm Evan and that's Gil. Evan. Nice to meet you. Gil. Good to see you, bud. Now, what are you guys? What are you guys doing now? Well, for starters, we are installing a two eight by seven Clope uh, insulated garage doors. So it's eight foot wide, or I'm sorry, ten foot wide by uh, um, eight foot high. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Um, and it is a really nice uh, stamped carriage style door. It is inch and five eighths thick, and it's a. Uh, um, a solid insulation, like a 9R value, which really helps uh, with the heating and cooling costs. Um, obviously, there's a house or living quarters above this, so that really takes care of any kind of heating or cooling elements. Um, it'll keep the upstairs cool um, instead of your basic pan style door with no insulation. Um, that's more of a contractor grade style or basic door. This is a very nice upgrade. This important part, which is this is a torsion spring system, and what it does is it uses the cables and these springs to lift the weight of this door. This is the most dangerous part about working on a garage door. Uh, the rest is really elementary. Uh, these are very, they're wound up close to 32 times both sides. Holy cow. Um, they have a lot of tension on them, and between the, the springs, and the cables on either side that hold your door completely straight and level. Uh, that's the most dangerous part of the door. So this is actually gonna be the part where we put tension on it. Um, we get the cables completely level, we're gonna put tension on it, and that that will raise the door up and down. Evan, what, what, the, on, what makes it dangerous? Um, we're gonna backwind these springs towards the wall um, 32 times each one. Wow. And what that does is that's designed, each spring that uh, has a weight designed to carry this door. So this door, your motor should never be doing the work of the door. Your the spring does that, you're winding up basically. Exactly, a lot of people think, do I need a three quarter horsepower motor or a half horsepower motor? Depending on what kind of door you have, most of the time, you, you just need a half horsepower. That, that'll do just fine because your motor should never be carrying the weight of your door. The motor is the truck and your door is the trailer. How heavy is the door? This door, probably this size, is probably close to 200 pounds. Um, so you'd be, you'd be hard pressed to muscle that up above exactly, your head. Exactly, but you could do a lot of damage to your, at your motor if the springs aren't the right uh, um, size and they're not tensioned correctly, you're gonna damage your motor, which is gonna cost you more money at the end. So you wanna make sure you have the correct springs on and the correct tension because a child should be able to lift this door without yeah. the motor, if yeah. they pull that emergency release, a kid should be able to lift this door up and down in case power goes out or some kind of an emergency. Mm -hmm. um, if you need two people to open your door, um, there's something wrong. And you you set the tracks up first, then you s probably slid in the bottom, second, third, fourth, right? Well, or you slid it through the back, how'd you? Actually, on new, these are two piece tracks. So this track will put up very, almost last. But what we do really, is to make sure you're putting it in perfect because not every build has the perfect width and height. So what we do is we actually build the bottom panel, we set that bottom section in, um, we hold it in place, and then we start building the side tracks around it. Then we'll throw a level on it, oh, make sure they go up straight okay. with the door. But we will um, we will attach the tracks and um, uh, hinges. Um, as we build the door up, but we'll leave the tracks loose because your concrete pour might not be level. So the door is only gonna sit as level as the concrete. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we have to adjust the track to go to the left or the right, because that's gonna carry these gaps right here. You want the door to sit perfectly straight, but if the concrete's not, there's nothing you can do about it. So on this side, you can see a little bit more. Well, and I see you've got, there. it's it's look like an oval where the, where the uh, bolt goes in. Yeah. Okay. Oh. 
But what we're going to do on this side is I'm going to pull this cable a little bit tighter to adjust and make this door perfectly level sitting in here. So I'm going to pull this cable a little tighter. Man, there's a lot more to this than I ever imagined. It, okay. it, it's, it's a little bit more complicated, but they're all the same system, basically. Yeah. So it's really, uh, once you learn the system, up above right here. Yeah. So... Um, you're only going to get like a quarter turn out of it. Exactly. Well, that's how it actually works. So okay. um, you have four, you have four little uh, notches on there. So this is a eight foot tall door, mm -hmm. and this has one, two, three, four holes. So obviously, one, each one of these is a full revolution. I'm sorry, all four is a full revolution. So each one is obviously a quarter turn. Got it. So. Really, really, you can take the uh, full turn for your measurement to doing it. So it's an eight foot tall door and it's gonna unwind uh, one time per foot. So eight times four is what, 32? So realistically, you wanna have it wound up 32 to 33 times. Oh, spring. got it. So if it's a seven okay. foot door, you wanna have it right around 20, 29. But you, got, you have to have one extra turn on it because if it comes up all the way and there's no more tension left on the springs to keep the cables tight, they'll unwind themselves and then, then now your door's stuck up there um, without the capability to go back down. Sure. They'll get tangled around the drum. To completely keep tension on exactly. it the whole time. Yeah. Got it. So I'm going to start doing this one. So I'm going to count. Oh, and you start by hand, okay. You kind of get going as far as you can before you, you run out of muscle. Because they're, they're, they're pretty serious springs. That's crazy. He's probably on five. And he's... Well, it's a good show we're working out, that's for sure. That's fine. Okay, so you, how many times have you turned that one? This one is at 33. 33. Okay, and now you're tightening those set bolts to yep. Once you... keep it from unwinding. Yep, so I've got it. And then you got to be careful. You don't want to just let it go. You don't want to pull your bar out. Uh, that's a good way to get hurt. So I'm, I'm letting it go gently to feel it. There's no tension on it. My two set screws are tightened up. So I have tension on one spring because there are two separate springs. One, you have your left and you have your right. And each one of them is wound the opposite way. So if you accidentally put this bar on backwards and had the springs in the wrong place, you would unwind the cones off the spring. Oh, okay. So, I got you. So you got now let me ask you a quick question before you do the other side. What, what's the biggest thing that, if, if, and this is a new one, but if you had a garage and your garage door isn't working right what's usually the number one number two culprit well in the industry we kind of we try to say um you should service or lubricate your door every time you turn your clocks back so okay. it starts with lubricating it because most doors don't have um, this is an upgraded door they have really nice these have really nice polyurethane uh almost like skateboard wheel rollers on them oh, 13 okay. ball bearing um, so these are, you're not metal on metal, but a lot of the older doors, you have this metal shaft going through here on the roller. Yep. A lot of this doesn't get lubricated. Um, being out here in Georgia, close to the water, um, you have a lot of issues, you know what I mean, with them uh, starting to rust. Mm -hmm. Even though they're um, uh, galvanized, you still get the calcium buildup and all that stuff from uh, the outside elements still make it into here. So you really want to lubricate this and you want to use a good lubrication that's not WD-40. A lot of people use wheel bearing grease and put it in the tracks right here, or they spray it down with WD-40. WD-40 is a great lubrication, but the problem is WD-40 is really oily and it collects dirt and dust. What would you suggest? Up. So you want to use some sort of... Uh, um, penetrating gel. Um, yeah, like a uh, silicone penetrating gel, like a gel gotcha. lube, something like that, that sprays on. I like the clear stuff. A lot of them, they sell them at Home Depot or Lowe's. They go on yellow and it's real thin. And that's something that a homeowner can do. Yes. They need they to can, call you yeah. guys when yeah. it's not going upright or, because yeah. I would either, and listen to me good here, if you're watching this video, I would never adjust. Well, not, not to try and market or sell ourselves on anything, but you could do that on your own, but we do a really good, you know, $59 service where we come out and lubricate, but we also tune up your door, which is the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, because yeah. if you're having issues with it, you know, being lubricated, you probably want us to check your tension, your springs may be worn out, 
your motor a lot of times needs the chain readjusted, lubricated. So for 59 bucks, you'll come out and do that? We'll come out and do it. It's oh. basically a 21 point inspection. That's crazy. We take care of everything. We'll let you know if there's something that you do need or we'll, we'll make you aware of probably a, something that might need to be replaced in the future. But a lot of times people, having a garage door is a commodity. So you come home, I don't use my front door. I come home, I hit the button and the door better go up. So you just, you always expect that to work. Now, nobody pays attention to the springs up here. It's no, just there. Never in a million years. Yeah. Um, and maybe one of the rollers. And I think you kind of, you kind of take it for granted. It's like mm -hmm. you think you just flip the switch and the light turns on, but yeah, there's a lot more moving parts to this that you need to. So for 59 bucks, you'll just come and check it all out. Now, will you do any adjustments or anything for the 59? Everything, yeah, we'll do okay. the adjustments. So if there's stuff that needs replaced, we'll let you know. Like, let's say we recommend putting yeah, the rollers on. Yeah, we'll okay. give you a quote on that and tell you what to do. But most of the time, we just come out, look everything over, adjust it. A lot of times, um, these screws right here, your, your, your screws that go in to hold the um, uh, hinges, a lot of times those screws will come loose a little bit. Um, your door might be sitting awkwardly, you know, any kind of that stuff. A lot of times the bottom rubber seal has dry rotted and worn off. Mm -hmm. You know, we could offer to replace that. There's all kinds of stuff that you could keep doing for preventative maintenance that really will make your door last. I mean, these doors are stamped metal. They're, they're, they're built to last forever unless you hit them or, you know, obviously kids kicking soccer balls, stuff like that. Yeah. They're still meant to take that. These doors can take a lot of abuse. It's the moving parts that you have to really take care of. And nobody, you know, not a lot of people say, oh man, I haven't had my garage door looked at in a while, but it's definitely something that you want to do. When these when these cables and springs break, it'll scare you. It's very dangerous, especially if the door's going to Oh, that's good. that 200 pound door's going to come slamming down on you. With well, no... you know, if a lot of the times they won't break in the up position, it'll break when it's down like this. So you'll be sleeping and you'll hear a loud bang. Oh. And then you'll get you, you you won't be able to figure out what it is because nobody pays attention to that. And you'll come out in the morning and you'll hit the button and the door will, yeah. you know, you'll yank this top panel out because it's trying to carry the weight, but the springs are broken. So there's just a lot of stuff to sure. keep an sure. eye on. But like I said, we can come do that. You, we tell people to do it every time you turn the clocks back. So listen, for fifty nine bucks, that's a great deal. So yeah. all right, my man, I'll let you go back to work and. Um, Learned a lot myself about garage doors that I didn't know. So, all right, Evan, tell Christopher I said hi. Thank you so much. All right, Thank bud. You. Take care. Thank buddy. you, man. Pleasure. All right.